Coming up on the DMT 1 to 1 show, episode 53 on the 26th of March 2014, an interview with Steve Martocci and Matt Amonetti, co-founders of the company Splice. This week's show is brought to you by Omniphone, the leading B2B cloud music provider powering global music services including Sony Music Unlimited, Guvera, Rara and Sirius XM. Find out more on Omniphone.com and by MusicGraph, the world's first knowledge engine for music, available as a consumer app and as a graph API for developers. Check out musicgraph.com or developer.musicgraph.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the DMT One to One show. And it's a pleasure today to have uh, uh, Steve Martocci and Matt Amonetti, the co founders of the company Splice. So, hi, guys, and thanks for joining me. How's it going? Very good, thank you. Yeah, sight. Awesome. We have uh, an amazing view in the background. So, you're really in Miami. We can't uh, ask for anything more, uh, but you guys are not based in Miami. So, <laughs> first of all, let's start with a quick o overview of what Splice is. You know, we, we say at Splice our mission is to, to allow artists, musicians to create fearlessly and let creativity flow across the world. And what that really means is to kind of connect the creation experience for music. Right. Um, so we're, we're basically a, a service that adds on to the existing DAWs, so Ableton, Logic, those types of services, and uh, provides you all the tools to create fearlessly, meaning backup like time machine-like features where you can go back in time to any previous save, which really ends up being a version control system. So we're both right. software guys. Um, so we bring the version control tools we've been using in software to music creation, which is hard because we want to make it really make sense for, for music. Um, and then in addition to that, we kind of connect you to other musicians to allow you to easily collaborate and uh, understand the DNA of your music to kind of make that creativity flow and then you know soon give some pretty cool distribution opportunities That's as well. That's awesome. And so how, how did it all start out? Uh, what, what were the first steps of the company? Um, so yeah, that's a very interesting uh, question. I was a former sound engineer in Europe. I graduated from engineering school and I worked in, in Europe for a few years and I switched to the world of programming uh, for the rest of my life and I've done a lot of open source programming. I did startup. I worked at Sony PlayStation, Living Social. And Steve and I uh, met in Colombia, uh, the country in Bogota. And why don't you tell the rest of the story? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, Matt and I, so I'd known about Matt for a long time through his programming reputation. And uh, meeting at the conference, it was great because we immediately knew we wanted to work together. And well, we had a lot of common friends also. Uh, we did. Even though I was in California and you were yeah. in New York, I obviously knew about Steve and his success at, at GroupMe. Yeah, I, uh, before this, I started a con uh, uh, an app with my friend. Uh, called GroupMe, which is a group text messaging app. And it was originally made to go to concerts together with our friends, so kind of music related. Yeah. Um, but you know, what was next was Matt and I knew we wanted to work together, but we didn't know what it was going to be yet. And uh, a buddy of mine, who's the guitar player in a band, uh, the Disco Biscuits, uh, said three words at one point. He said, GitHub for Ableton. Yeah. And GitHub is, is kind of the tool we use to, uh, to put the, the nice layer, the kind of social coding layer on making software together. And we just hadn't seen it in music. And it's one of those things that like, everyone is probably, th if you make music and you write code, you've at some point thought, man, why doesn't this exist? Yeah. And uh, you know, once I said it to Matt, he was like, did you know I'm an audio engineer half my life? <laughs> I did not know that, Matt. And it kind of kicked everything right into gear. Yeah, w what's amazing is that it's much harder than just creating a service. We need to understand music at a lower level and we want to understand music like source code. Yeah which nobody has ever done yet, and it's actually a very challenging thing to do. And musicians are not programmers, so you cannot just transpose what you have in the programming world into the music world. Uh, but with the new technology and with Steve's uh, background and all these musicians who really want us to be successful and, and us wanting to help them, we've been able to build this, this product, and we're currently in private beta. Uh, we're probably going to open up the beta more and more in the next few weeks, yeah. so it's very exciting. Sure. And uh, so looking at uh, the product, it's got a lot of different uh, levels to yeah. it. And so that's, it's quite complex in that sense. Because in a way, it could, uh, it could, like a first layer, it could be construed almost like a, a, as, a, as a backup option in a sense. Yeah. Uh, but then there's the whole collaboration side, yeah. which is actually the, the, the strong suit of it. And then finally, there's a visualization element, uh, yeah. which comes third. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of pieces, right? So let's start with the backup part. Yeah, uh, so, so that that's work? where we try to sum all the backup features into that Create Fearlessly department. Because like musicians, w someone once told me, you can't refund inspiration, right? So you can't, yeah. you might never get back to that moment you had. Uh, and in, when you're making your, your music, you hit save in, in some of these DAWs like Ableton, and your previous changes are gone. 
right? Like it's hard to go back and sometimes these things crash or you have your work on a hard drive and it crashes and like, we just wanted to eliminate that from the equation. That was the like, the, the, ta the table stakes for this was people shouldn't be worried about losing their place. They should be able to explore also. Yeah, sorry, they should be able to explore music in different ways. And you know, when you, you, you're on the last mile but you're worried you, you mess up your track. Yeah. So you start creating a bunch of copies of every save single as, file. Save as, save as one, save as two, save as three. You don't yeah. know where they, where they are and then you come back the next morning like, wow, this was not that great. Let me go back, but you don't know where to yeah. go back. So that was, that's the core of the issue. Right. So, we started. so that's the kind of like version control, backup, time machine type part. But then it gets really interesting that the next part to, go, to jump ahead is when you start adding other people to the equation. Well, just before that, I think also sure. what's interesting <laughs> is every time you make a save, we actually understand the save you made. Right. So instead of just telling you this is version one, version two, we show you the difference between the two saves. So we tell you, you changed the clip, you moved it here, you added a sample, the node was modified. Um, we know all the plugins you're using, all the samples you're using. So if you're using different files, so let's say you have recordings everywhere. Right now, a lot of software, you need to collect all the files to give them to your friends. We collect all of that, gather that on the cloud, so you can go into another machine of yours and just Start re pull working. down your project yeah. or add somebody else, and you don't have to hunt all these files that might be missing. And it's funny, so, so those are the kind of tools that we think we're just should be, they should just exist, right? right. Like it's just, man, how did, how did the kind of industry not get there? Uh, and then it's the kind of next layer of the collaboration that starts to get even more exciting. Sure. And that's, you know, and it's it, for us, collaboration in music is not just sending the files because the files only kind of get half the work. There's so much more like what plugins did it use? As Matt was saying, what changed? Yeah. You know, sometimes if you use like a Dropbox for collaboration, you have no idea when something changed, what changed, what the intentions of the user was. So, yeah. you know, now we put everything onto a timeline, which lets you comment on what you did, uh, visualize the changes, as we said. And this works great for private collaboration. So you can work with one person, two people, 10 people. Sure. But then there's another level and that's publicly collaborating and this is something that like the world hasn't really seen before and we uh, you know I know Matt from open source software and uh, you know the world really changed when people started sharing their their code um, and so this this uh, this next layer is the open source kind of layer uh, where you can share your file with the world at a very low level yeah yeah, yeah at a very low level level that we uh, we haven't seen yet because you can share your stems, but that's already most of the work already done. Yeah. Um, so here we're talking about a raw level understanding. The raw the inspiration, yeah. as you will say, you know, really. And, and what I re also really like as a personal, some, somebody consuming music, is to be able to see the creation process. Seeing the evolution of a track over time is almost more interesting than just listening to the end product. You know, when you listen to a track, I'm always wondering, how did they come to that? Like, what is the process? And the education la layer education, beyond that yeah. is really, really big because now I can learn from these top guys and I can understand how they're doing it and I'll do it my own way but I'll be able to, to contribute to some extent, giving my feedback. And it, it's, it's a very interesting thing we haven't seen yet and we're really eager to see more feedback from people and starting, you know, we work closely with a bunch of artists and we, we already got a few people who got one of the tracks and then they remixed the track by getting all the DNA and they did another song. It's not almost a remix, it's another song. We don't know what to really call it. <laughs> so the, the, one of the hardest parts with Splice is that there's so much new terminology. Yeah. You know, like it's uh, like, what do you call something that's not really a uh, a remix? It's like the next, ver like we had this uh, artist on uh, Ausla, Alicia, uh, fr a French duo, uh, release like a, a work in pr like a minute and a half track, yeah. right? And the community took it, and like a hundred people started working on this thing, and remixes started coming out, but. Is it really a remix? I mean, they took the minute and a half track, made it a four and a half minute track, added their own vibe to it. It's like, we call them splices right now, but we don't even know if that's the right term well, we're it, working on. It's, it. The problem with remix is that it means you're changing the mix. Here, it's you're rearranging the song. Entirely. Like the song is just, you're keeping the inspiration, but you're going a different direction. But you know, it's funny, you could just redo the arrangement. Like you have the flexibility to do whatever you want. Yeah. So it could be a remix, it could be a progression, you have no idea. So, you know, it's it's this terminology and coming up with stuff that's so, and, but it's also why it's so fun to work on. And yeah. it is like potential to change everything, I think in music, because there's been nothing that connects the creation experience. Right. And that's kind of, and then from there out, collaboration, distribution, uh, you know, the, the way to build a listening platform around it as well for this kind of work, it's really, there's some really cool stuff coming. <laughs> and so let's talk about the boring stuff. So uh, yeah. well, <laughs> if we, if we if, uh, you know, in, in GitHub, there's a very yeah. codified sort of behavior of how developers should 
approach the code that is shared there. Yeah. Uh, but it, on, on a legal standpoint, in music, it's very different because there's all the sets, different sets of rights that come into play. And so, what happens if somebody, you know, what, what happens with the creations that come out of that and the collaborations that yeah. come out of that? So it's actually more similar than you think. Like uh, even in GitHub, like pretty much every project that you're going to work on has some kind of a license associated with it. You know this pr this stuff pretty well. But and those licenses are very degrees of what you're allowed to do with the stuff. Um, so right now, you know, we think of people are releasing their tracks under Creative Commons, right. uh, and that's what we're doing on Splice now. We're exploring more and more uh, of the different opportunities within Creative Commons, and then what other kind of licenses we can do. And so there's two sides of it, right? There's like I use these samples to create this, and what does that mean to the uh, to the creator? And then there's the I made a new derivative work from this person, what does it mean to me, especially if, because yeah. we've had people get uh, tracks like picked up, um, a remix was picked up on a label recently, um, and it's basically turning out to be a great platform for discovering new artists, because right. you can see their, their process and all that stuff. So uh, we're exploring it, we think it's a big opportunity for us, because sample clearance uh, and all that stuff, when you want to do something commercially, is really hard to do right now. Yeah. And, and labels have trouble even finding the list of, of, of tracks that people used until it's two weeks before they release things. So we think it's, an, you know, where most people would see it as a problem, we think it's a really big opportunity. And, you know, the fact of the matter is we want to make it easy to use samples and easy to publish your work. And, like, by networking all this music, uh, I think we can be the guys to do it. Yeah, and I think what's interesting is that we are on the creator's side. And we're willing to work with labels and right clients and everything else, but we repre represent the creators, which is a new thing because usually technology comes from the other side. Yeah. And, and now we're trying to take a different perspective on it. Mm -hmm. Sure, and so uh, on the, uh, the final part, which is the visual visualization uh, part as well, yeah. uh, that is not strictly related to a piece of software. So in theory, you could actually visualize the components of the track yeah. right within Splice without having to actually have Ableton or... or yeah, you got to see a little uh, sneak preview of something that hasn't really been seen in public ah, yet. Right. But yeah, so, so basically <laughs> we have a thing that we've been working on called the DNA player. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's the ability to kind of see those core components as a listening experience. Right now, really the waveform is all people have have to consume music yeah. um, and now since we've gone beyond the two-channel audio and we understand the DNA entirely new experiences for listening can be built uh, around this from an educational side from an entertainment side kind of everything so uh, if we keep we really believe by working with the creators and disrupting out from them um, we can cause some some serious changes in the in the industry in favor of the creators and bringing the fans closer uh, to the process and the creative side. The company under the hood is actually called Distributed Creation Inc. because we want to really, really distribute the creation process and, and the, the inspiration and art to, to kind of everybody. Yeah, I mean, I, I must admit, if, when I was doing my master's in composition, that would have really saved my bacon, having something like <laughs> yeah. Splice. Uh, uh, yeah. you know, it would have saved me so many hours of work. Uh, <laughs> There's nothing better out. than seeing an artist's eyes when they like, get what you're doing. Because like, you talk to a lot of people in the industry, and it's sometimes hard for them to really understand how it changes their life until they get to the distribution side, because that's all they've seen technology on. But you show it to an artist, and then they're just, for real? You're like, this is what you guys can do? Uh, so that's that's kind of one of the best parts, I'd say. And finally, let's talk platforms. Uh, uh, what platforms are you supporting at the moment? And th do you see a you know I hear most people are working with Ableton or uh, Logic these days, but I also have heard from a few people that they use Cubase still. So that I was surprised about that because uh, I don't know, I haven't used Cubase in years. But you know, what, what's the distribution mm -hmm. there, and what's your focus? Um, so we chose to start with Mac and Ableton um, for a few reasons. Uh, first, we we thought that a lot of the the EDM scene and hip hop scene was using uh, Ableton and they were mainly on Mac. And it's an interesting scene to, for us to work on because the amount of audio files you have to manage is smaller than uh, yeah. if you do rock or if you do something else. They're also more technology savvy. They usually want to work with computers. They know the cloud, they know the web, they're not scared of it. So we started by that and now we're doing, we have an alpha version for Windows and for Logic and we're looking at what is going to be the next step. But we really want to be driven by our users. We always aim for a 10x experience. That's the big part. So that was the things like, if we could not get a 10x experience on Ableton for Mac, it's not worth going much further because that's really what we want for every single platform. And, and what we mean by that 10x experience, if any of you watching get to experience Splice, like totally seamless integration, right? Like you click a button on the web, the project shows, the indicator opens right up, you make your changes, it goes right up. Like, we want it to be hard not to use this because it's so much better than your alternatives. And you know, that's where we've really invested the last six months 
on building that 10x experience. And only now are we out there talking about Splice more, uh, ta looking at other platforms, because that we're, we think we're approaching the experience we're looking for. Yeah, the other aspect is that we're doing most of our work server side. So we do all the parsing of these files, the understanding and analysis, everything is server side. So it's not so much about hooking into this software, which we're, we can do, but it's really to build this platform so we can add more uh, DAWs in the future and we can still get a, a great experience. Um, so we have a very scalable um, architecture that's very safe, very secure, that can really uh, take a lot of users and we built on our, our, our experience in the past to do that so people don't end up with a place where first we end up having to charge them for storage. We don't want to charge people for storage if we can avoid that. We don't want to profit off them. You right. know, like what we really, you know, there's, there's costs associated with the storage, but we, we believe by getting the world's music on the platform, there's so many new experiences to go out there and do. And one of those is providing them with the tools that they need to make music. Um, you know, there's a lot of things in plugins, there's a lot of things in uh, acquiring sample packs and things like that, that we're very interested in providing them with the tools they need to make music. And then we, in the end game, we really want to make money when artists make money. Um, you know, we don't think that it's right to kind of try to profit from them at their like kind of vulnerable early stage before they've even give, been given a shot to find out if they're the next big thing in the world. You know, yeah. there's, there's so much, but there's opportunity on both sides, on the production side and then on the distribution side, which we're really excited about over time. That's interesting because, you know, uh, the first thing you'd think about a company like this, it would be like a, a service charge of some sort on, on a monthly yeah. basis, right? Yeah, you know, there will definitely be a splice premium at some right. point, yeah, you sure. know, like, but the, we don't want it to be something that lowers the barrier to getting the art on the system. Yeah. Um, you know, especially when I look at the, the aspiring musicians that can't pay their rent and to, to take that from them like we want to get them on there we want to help them you know be more successful and that's what we're really focused on the creator yeah I mean I, I was actually I was thinking about plugins the other day because I had to get a, a fairly expensive plugin to clean up a track that ended up yeah. uh, clipping uh, I was thinking that it's, it's kind of weird that there isn't a rental model yet for plugins <laughs> uh, yeah uh, <laughs> you know not to go too specific into our plans but yeah. <laughs> uh, solving the third party plugin issue is, is very high on our list of you know when we say we want to let creativity flow one of the things that holds that back is in probably the biggest way is the, the plugins right now. Yeah. Um, and so now in Splice, with the, the first phase of that is identifying which plugins the track uses. Sure. So at least you know what you need to get, and you click on those, and then we link to where you can go get them. Um, we're doing some really, really interesting stuff around free plugins and, uh, and you know, in the future paid plugins. But right. as I said, our goal is to get the tools there to allow creativity to flow. So expect some fun things in the future. Perfect. Thank you so much, guys. And cool. uh, again, it's uh, splice.com, right? Yep. Uh, go and check it out. It's private beta now, so you, you have to sign up to, with your email address, and hopefully you get uh, a sign up. Yeah, uh, if, you, if you follow us on Twitter and tweeted us uh, with hashtag get spliced. Um, you need to mention Andrew. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> mention the podcast. The show. Yeah, mention the then, show. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, and we'll uh, we'll let, we'll let you in. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks.